Okay, we're finally ready to talk about the projection matrix because we've set our thing up in world coordinates and we've put it in the camera local coordinates and now we can flatten it to an image. So that's what this is going to do. And the simplest way of doing this is with an orthographic projection. So this is where we preserve lengths and angles. And so to do this, actually, let me, let me define a couple things real quick. So remember how we started off with the OpenGL coordinate system where the left side here was negative one and X, the right side was positive one, this was negative one and Y, and this was positive one and Y. We're actually gonna introduce one more dimension here, which I know I said I was going down to 2D and I will be, but bear with me. Um, I'm also going to keep track of one more thing here as I go along. So what I'll say is this coordinate down here is really, so negative one and X, negative one and Y, and also negative one and Z, interestingly. So in this viewing volume, um, negative one is actually towards us in Z. Okay, so then the opposite corner up here is going to be positive one and X, positive one and Y, and positive one and Z. Um, and just to give one more example so, so that we're, we're totally clear, um, this coordinate here would be negative one and X, negative one and Y, and positive one and Z. Okay, so what we're gonna try to do is put our entire volume that we can see into this box, okay? And in doing so, we'll manage to kind of look at everything in just the front of the box, and that's what we're going to see in 2D, okay? Now, if we go back over to the WebGL coordinates that we're used to, well, actually, positive Z in a right-handed coordinate system um, is out of the screen, right? It's in, in this direction. So here's what we have to specify for orthographic projection. Um, we need to specify what's the leftmost thing that I can see. So, so that's going to be this x coordinate over here. Um, what's, what's the rightmost thing that I can see? So that'll be an x coordinate over here. What's the uppermost thing that I can see? So that'll be a y coordinate up here. What's the, the bottommost thing that I can see? So that'll also be a y coordinate. And then I have two new pieces of information that I'm gonna talk about for the first time. The one is called the near clip plane. So let me draw it here. So what I'm gonna say is this is the closest, so it's kind of hard to label this here, but, but this is the bottom down here. Um, now this square that or rectangle that I drew is the near clip plane. So anything that's in front of this, so anything that has a, a Z coordinate that is larger than the near clip plane, I cannot see. And I similarly have a far clip plane. So this is the furthest back that I can see. So I'll say here's my near clip plane and this is my far clip plane. And so my goal is going to be to take this volume. So let me draw all the vertices on this rectangular prism here. So I'm gonna to wanna to take this volume and stretch it or squash it. So it's so the volume between these, these eight vertices, between the, the left, right, top, bottom, near and far. And stretch it and squash it until it fits into this viewing volume. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now before I derive the equations to do that, let me first show you what it looks like so you have an idea. And this is not natural. This is not how we see it all. We see in, with the perspective, which we'll do in the next module, but um, just to give you an idea, okay, so here's our ordinary perspective projection. What we see is, turns out this ellipsoid back here actually has um, a semi-major axis, which is twice the radius of this, but this is closer, so it looks bigger here in this 2D picture. Okay, so, so that's just one thing. And, and the other thing I notice is as I move from left to right, the things that are closer to me move more than the things further away from me. Okay, 
So this is not going to be true in orthographic projection. So what I'm going to be changing as I move around are the locations of um, the left and the right and the, the near and the far and the top and the bottom. Um, actually, I guess you can say that those are fixed. It's just that the camera that's changing. Okay, so, so once we're in camera coordinates, we do have a fixed left, right, um, near, far, and top and bottom. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. You'll do this as, as an exercise in a moment. But once it works properly, here it is. So first thing you notice right away is that everything is the correct size. So we say this is an isometric view. Um, what it means is that it, it preserves lengths. It does not distort lengths of things that are far away. So everything I see here, I have the correct relative sizing. Same thing, as I move left and right, it doesn't matter how far away you are, you move at the same rate. So that's pretty neat, actually. Um, this is very useful, as I mentioned before, for CAD, for computer-aided design, because um, when you're making a car model, you want to know you don't want to have parallax or this distortion from perspective viewing that makes things look smaller than they are. Okay, so I got it correct. So it told me I got it correct. Um, so this, it looks a little weird, but, but it's, it's actually pretty neat too. So here I believe I had the, the left and the right from like negative 10 to 10, and I had the top at 15 and Y and the bottom at negative 5 and Y. Um, so let me reset here just for comparison, okay. So, so that's what it looks like. Now in this one, I've gone and I have um, made the left and right a little bit smaller, so from negative five to five. So this is still an isometric view, but I have a smaller viewing window. So, so it's like I kind of move, compress these in, left and right are smaller, and so we're top and bottom. Um, so you see it's, it's kind of like having tunnel vision. I can't see as much, but it has the same properties, right? You can see the relative sizing between, between these two spheres is, is correct, and um, as I move left to right, it doesn't matter how far away I am, I move at the same rate. So that's isometric viewing. Um, just to give a couple, couple more quick examples that I found on the internet. Um, here is sort of, this, this was from something called Ogre, the Ogre engine, open graphics rendering engine. I used to use it actually back in the day. It's kind of old now, but, um, so this was a demo they had in Ogre, I believe. And they're showing, um, so this is what orthographic rendering looks like of this monkey face and these five cubes. Uh, here's what perspective looks like. And you can see the difference, right? As, as I go farther away, the cubes look like they're getting smaller. Um, but here, they're, they're the same size the whole way. Now, you may have seen some movies or video games that are rendered in orthographic as well. It's kind of an interesting effect here. Um, particularly if, if you want to be able to move around and understand how, how quickly you're moving and you want to if you're moving at a constant velocity move the same amount so orthographic is useful for those kind of things as well um, here's another example that I found to be quite extreme so <laughs> this is like some kind of building I guess um, and this is how we would normally see it but look at how different it is when we actually keep everything sized appropriately so anyway, so that's orthographic rendering. Now let's talk about how do you set up this matrix to do this. So let's go back here and start to think about how do I warp the coordinates here so that they are in the box over here. Okay, I might as well put all these vertices here. Um, Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let me just look at one coordinate at a time. So, so what does it take to put x? So that the rightmost x ends up at positive one and the leftmost x ends up at negative one. So first of all, what I should do is, so take my x over here um, and I'll say, okay, let me divide that by right minus left. Okay, so what that will do is, well actually, let me also subtract off left. So let's, let's look at this and see, see what it does. So if I subtract off left, let's check. So right minus left. So if I plug in the rightmost x I can possibly get, um, that gives me right minus left over minus left. That gives me one. Okay, so, so I'm good. So the right's going to positive one. Um, what if I plug in the left? 
So now I'll plug in the left. You see that's left minus left was a zero over right minus left. Okay, so the left goes to zero here. Um, but I actually wanted the left to go to negative one. Okay, so I have to tweak this a little bit. And what I actually have to say is it ends up being two times x minus left over right minus left minus one. Okay, so what I see is, <clears throat> let's try this again now. So if I plug in right, so the right most it can be, I get right minus left times two over right minus left. So that's gonna be two, but minus one. Okay, so right still goes to one, that's good. Uh, now if I plug in left, I get zero here, but then zero minus one is negative one. Okay, so this is the equation to move me over um, so that my x gets warped from where it is here. So where the left is negative one and the right is positive one, okay. Anything that's less than left or greater than right gets clipped. So this is another part of the rendering pipeline that I'm not gonna have as much time to talk about but, the, but you have to do something called clipping where you figure out what is actually in the view volume here um, and what's not. So there may be a triangle that kind of goes, you know, part of it's inside, but part of it's outside. And I have to clip it here. It's like taking scissors and cutting it. Um, and in this case, you see that, um, that just, oops, it's having, I have a hard time drawing it, but, but just this part is left. So this quadrilateral will be left inside the volume. Okay, but I'm not gonna talk about that too much here. Just, just note that only the stuff that survives and is inside this viewing volume is going to show up here. Okay, but I wanna put this into a matrix. So I have to rearrange some stuff. So what I notice is, okay, I can rearrange this equation. It's going to be two times x over right minus left. So that's the part. So it's like a scaling in x, which makes sense, right? I need to scale the x, but I also have a translation part. So that's going to end up being negative two times left. Um, so let me say, plus, I'll put this all in parentheses, negative two times left over right minus left um, minus one. Okay, so that's the equation for mapping the left and the right. Um, to map up and down, it's a very similar thing. It's going to be two times y over, um, it'll be top minus bottom plus negative two bottom over top minus bottom minus one, okay. So what you need to do is figure out how to put this in a matrix. So these are gonna be scaling parts and these, and then they're also gonna have translation parts. Um, you can show a similar thing for the Z coordinate, although we have to be a little careful because um, the Z coordinate here, positive is, is in this direction and negative is in this direction, but here it gets flipped. So it actually turns out to be um, something a little different, which I've provided to you in the starter code. So I've provided the Z part. So you can use that as a reference, but I really want you to focus on the left and the right. And actually, like I said, we're, we're not even really worried about the Z part right now. We kind of ignore it. I'll, I'll explain at the end of this module why we need to know a Z, even though we're making just a 2D image. Um, so really it's just the, the X and Y that I want you to focus on now. Okay, so that's orthograph projection. So you're gonna finish that real quick and get that to work. And then we'll move on to perspective.